Welcome back. In the previous segment, we saw how an array could be passed to a function. Now we are going to use those ideas to build a somewhat more elaborate function. So this function is going to sort an array. Okay, so the input is an array containing numbers. The output, well the output is going to be present in the same array and you can think of the goal as being to rearrange the numbers so that they appear in non-decreasing order. So as an example, suppose the array initially is 35, 12, 29, 70, 18, 29 then at the end we want this desired order. So 12, 18, 29, 29, 35, 70, okay? Okay, so how do we do this? Well, before we say how do we do this, I should point out that this is an important operation. And sorting in chapter 16 will give us a clue as to why this is the case. So we'll, we'll, we are going to do that, so we'll just wait until then. There are many algorithms for sorting and chapter 16 will discuss a clever and fast algorithm. Here we discuss a slow but an easy to algorithm, uh, understand algorithm called selection sort. The basic idea of selection sort is find the largest number in the array. Okay? Then we exchange it with the element in the last position. Now we have made progress. Why? Because the last position now contains the largest number which is really what we wanted, the last element of the array to indeed contain the largest and we have placed it there. So what happens now? We just have to do the same thing for the first n-1 elements. Okay? So we apply the same idea to the first n-1 elements of the array where n is the length of the array then to first n minus 2 and so on. Okay, so a primitive step in all of this is finding the index of the largest element. Okay? Well, we said we want the largest element, but actually it is more useful to find the index of the largest element. Where is that largest element present in that array? So here is, here is uh, uh, a function which does that. So this function takes as argument an array, well, uh, an array name, but as you know, it is the starting uh, the st uh, a pointer to the start of the array and the length of the array. But we can think of A as an array name, okay? as, as, we, uh, as we saw that when the parameter passing the values are copied, it really behaves like the name of the array. This function is going to return the index of the largest element in A. So what is the invariant for this iteration? Well, so for the ith iteration, the invariant is that max index, which will be a variable that we will define soon, will equal the index of the largest element in A0 through I-1. Okay? Or I should say A index, if there are multiple, it will be one of the uh, uh, multiple elements which are maximum, it will be the index of one of those elements. Okay, so we start by setting i equal to 1 and max index equal to 0. Okay, so this makes the invariant hold. Why? Because if i equals 1, a0 through i minus 1 is just a0 and max index is indeed the index of the largest element. Well, there is only one element, a0 and its index is a fine uh, index of the largest element in A. Kind of trivial but we will do. Now we are going to increase i until L minus 1 and as we increase i we want the invariant to hold. Okay? So this is like our max so far but instead of keeping track of the max we are keeping track of the index. So A of max index is max so far and if this is smaller than the new element then we are going to set max index equal to i. Okay? So either way, max index will point to the largest element or be the index of the largest element. And so at the end we return max index. I should note that in doing this, the number of comparisons needed is going to be L minus 1. So for each value of i going from 
1 to uh, 1 to L minus 1. So, L minus 1 comparisons will be needed. Okay. We are later on going to estimate the time taken for this and this value will be needed over there. Okay. So, what is the main function and the main program? So, the main function is the function selection sort. It again receives uh, the name of the array which is the address of uh, the 0th element but which we can pretend is the name of the array uh, because the name of the array means the same thing and the length of the array. Then we are going to start with n. Remember we said that we are going to place the largest element in the nth position, then the second ele largest element in the n minus 1th position and so on. So that is what this loop is for. We first calculate max index which is pos of max of a i. If you remember pos of max was going to return an index of the maximum element in the array a of length i. Now our array a actually has length n. The, in the first iteration this will be n, but in the subse uh, subsequent iterations this will be smaller. But if you remember according to our discussion in the first iteration we wanted to find the largest element in the entire array. In the next iteration the largest element was already in position n. So, we wanted to find the largest element in the first n minus 1 positions and that is exactly what this statement will do because in the next iteration i will have come down one step. So, this will be n minus 1. So, this is exactly what we want. Okay? So, pos of max this function thinks that the array only has i elements but that is okay. okay? So, it is going to only tell us the index of the largest element in the first i elements that it is going to consider from this array. Now we want to do the exchange, we want to exchange the uh, i minus 1th element with max index. Okay? Why i minus 1th element? Well, in the ith iteration we are going to consider i elements. Okay? So, this is element 0, 1, 2 and this last element is i minus 1. So, we found some max index over here and we are going to exchange the element over here and the element over here. So, what this will do is we already before starting would have had the correct values over here, okay, the largest values over here. Now, the largest value in this entire region is going to be pushed to this point and so the good region will extend a little bit more that is what this is doing. Okay? So, we need to do this exchange. So, how is this exchange done? Well, the exchange is simple enough. We copy the value at max index to max val. So, this is max index. So, this value goes into this variable called max val. Okay? Then we copy the value in i minus 1 into this position. And finally, we copy the value over here into this position. Okay? So, the exchange is done. Okay? So, that is it, that is our selection sort. Okay? So, in our main program, we will create this array and then we will call, we will call, uh, make us call to sort. Okay? Yeah, so, we will print it, but I will show that printing step when we do. Uh, a demonstration. Okay. All right. So, before we do the demonstration, let us um, review what we have done a little bit. Okay. So, uh, this is our function and let us say, let us try to count how expensive, how much time this whole thing takes. Okay. So, uh, we said that pos of max, our function will perform L minus 1 comparisons where L is the length of the array pa passed to pos of max. Okay? So, this is what I am talking about. So, this red part 
this red part will require me to do L comparisons, L minus 1 comparisons, okay, uh, if the array has size L. So, if the array has size i or if this argument is i, it will do i minus 1 comparisons. The first iteration it will do n minus 1 comparisons, the next iteration it will do n minus 2 comparisons, n minus 3 comparisons and so on. Okay. So, cell sort calls pos of max for l equals n, n minus 1, 2. So, the number of comparisons it does is n plus n minus 1 all the way down to 2. So, it is n plus 2 times n minus 1 upon 2. Okay, so, just about n squared by 2 comparisons. So, even if I just count the number of comparisons, cell sort will do about n squared give or take, take a factor of 2 okay. and uh, n squared turns out to be not such a fast algorithm. You can do far fewer comparisons and we will see that a little bit later. Okay, but anyway, this algorithm will sort correctly. And uh, now we are going to see a demo in which that sorting is going to happen. So let us take a look. So this is our function. Okay. So this is our uh, code for uh, pos max. I have added a print statement because I would like to print the array at different points. So we will see where this is going to be used. Okay. So let us just take a look at the cell sort function. Okay, so, I have modified it a little bit and the modifications are store shown by these stars. So, what I am doing is at the very beginning, at, at the beginning of each iteration, I am going to print out the entire array. So, this way you can see how the array is going to change. And in, to make sure that, uh, uh, okay, so, so then this pos of max is going to be called. And I am also going to tell you where that index is, what index was reported. So again we can check how pos of max is working, how the entire thing is working. And I do not want the iterations to go off very fast. Okay. So here I am going to just have a dummy variable okay, and I am going to read a number into it. I am not going to use this, but this will just force C++ to stop at this point and wait for me to type in something so that I can continue. So the value of the dummy variable is not important over here. I will just put in so that I can force C++ to stop. Okay. So the rest of the code is exactly the same and at the end also I am going to print out a message and I am going to print out the value of the array. Okay, so, we had the print function at the top and that simply prints out the value of the array, value of all the elements in the array. So, let us execute, uh, compile and execute this. So, let us run it. Okay, so, this is the printout at the beginning of the first iteration of cell sort and then it so, this is the, at, at the time when nothing has been done, we are just beginning the very first iteration. And we have issued max pos and it says that the maximum value is found at index 3. Let us check if that is true. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 70 is at index 3 and it is indeed the maximum value. So, max pos has behaved correctly. So, let us just type in some nonsense value so that uh, the program will continue. Okay. So, now you see that the second iteration is being executed and at this point 70 has already gone to the end because of our exchange and we have also issued the call to one more max pos and that is limited to this region. And in this max pos is found at index 0 which is indeed true. So, again let us continue. Okay. And now 35 has gone till the end and now we are finding that max pos is found at index 2, 0, 1, 2. Yeah, there are two 29s but it has picked one of those and so and it is indeed at this position there is indeed the maximum, a maximum value. So let us again make it go forward. So this time 29 has gone till the end, well we do not know whether it was exchange or not but presumably there was an exchange. But now again a maximum is found at this position. Okay. 
So, let us again type 0. So, it has gone forward and this time it is really searching within this region, max pos is being found within this region. So, the largest value is over here and so index 0 is returned by max pos and so at this sorry let me type 0. So, at this point the function is returning at after returning to main program 12, 18, 29, 29, 35, 70 is printed and it is in indeed correctly sorted. All right. So, pos of max will perform L minus 1 comparisons where L is the length of the array passed to pos of max. Okay. So, we saw all these things, okay. we saw the demo and we can do a variation. We can express cell sort as a recursive program. Okay. So, I am going to leave this, I am going to show you the code, but I am going to leave this as an exercise for you. Okay. In fact, I am going to put out uh, the code as well and you can run it yourself and check it. Okay. So, that essentially concludes uh, this lecture and so I would like to make some remarks. And in this lecture, we saw what sort of happens behind the scenes when we access arrays okay? and we said what does an array name mean and what happens for the indexing operator and how do you pass an array to a function. Okay? And we said that when you pass an array to a function it does not copy values but it merely copies the address of the 0th element and if you want to access the entire if you want the function to access the entire array, you should tell the function how many, uh, how many elements the array has. So, that also must be passed. Okay. Writing functions on arrays is useful and this is definitely a skill that you must master. The selection sort runs in time proportional to the square of the number of elements being sorted. And in chapter uh, 16, we will discuss faster algorithms. I will stop here, but I will urge you to solve the problems at the end of uh, chapter 14 and of course, read chapter, uh, read chapter 14. Thank you.